Hey, what is up guys, it is RB in Hardware, and in today's video we're gonna build the best budget gaming PC for Cyberpunk 2077 specifically, and by now you guys know the drill, we're gonna go over the whole building process step by step from start to finish, and we're then going to fire up the PC and we're going to look at what kind of frame rate you can expect in Cyberpunk in case you decide yeah, to build this PC, and if you find anything you like, all items are linked up down below. With this PC build, you'll be able to run Cyberpunk 2077 at 1080p ultra settings with ray tracing at a respectable frame rate. And I actually found a pretty good sweet spot where I'm averaging between 50 to 60 FPS. But yeah, more on this a bit later in today's video. And by the way, yeah, obviously any other demonic game will run just great on this PC as well. This also includes 1440p gaming, which uh, yeah, again, we're gonna look at a bit later, right after the assembly. And with this PC build, I made sure to double check that every item is in stock. So in case you want to build this PC, yeah, you should be able to do that. Now inside this particular PC we find a 3rd gen 8 core Ryzen processor that performs excellent and even the most demanding AAA titles. Now while more games are starting to utilize more than 6 CPU cores, the 8 core 3700X can seem a bit overkill for a $1000 gaming PC, especially if you have no interest in doing anything other than to game on your machine. Therefore to give you guys a bit more freedom, I decided to throw in a 6 core Intel platform here as an option. I will discuss this more in a second. Now for system RAM, we're gonna pair the CPU with 16GB DDR4 from Corsair and for the rest of the system we find a 500GB SSD, an RTX 2060 graphics card with support for DLSS and ray tracing and all of this contained in this great looking deep cool matrix case. Anyway guys, timestamps can be found down below and before we get started, be sure to drop a comment, let me know what you thought about this video, drop a like if you enjoy the content and yeah, make sure to subscribe to never miss an episode. So let's start with our motherboard coming in at $129. This is the Asus B450 ROG Strix Gaming F ATX motherboard. Now, the Gaming F is one of Asus' most popular motherboards ever made for the Ryzen platform, thanks to high quality VRMs and stability and good capacitors, there is no wonder why it's so popular among other Ryzen enthusiasts. Now the ROG Strix is fully compatible with all existing 3rd gen Ryzen CPUs right out of the box and with the simple BIOS update it also has full support for the new 5th gen Ryzen Sam 3 CPUs as well. Anyway, yeah, great power delivery and heat sinks allow the gaming F to handle even the beefiest Ryzen 7 processors without running too hot and the board comes with a lot some nice extra features. For example, we find two M.2 slots which allow you to run two super fast MME drives. You also find six SATA ports, plenty of USB and yeah, some well needed RGB lightning. And overall, I really like the design and the color scheme of this board and this motherboard will look amazing in our deep cool matrix case. Moving on to the CPU, the 8 core 30 and Ryzen 3700X. Now, this monster CPU comes with 8 cores and 16 threads, and it will handle even the most demanding task you throw at it with ease. As a nice bonus, this CPU will work fantastic for you if you plan on streaming on your PC as well. Now, Cyberpunk 2077 does seem to benefit from having a CPU with support for SMT or hyper threading, which, yeah, this processor has, and this will allow the game to run a smooth as possible without stutter or random hiccups. Now if we take a quick look at the CPU gaming performance in Cyberpunk, we see that the 3700X has no problem running the game and it's not running a whole lot slower than the 10600K. But yeah, as can be seen, it actually trade blows with Intel's cheaper 6 core 10400. And so while I do recommend the 3700X for a lot of reasons, the 10400 is a cheaper pick. Now if we look beyond Cyberpunk, we see that both the 3700X 700X and the 10400 actually shows very similar numbers in other games too. Now because the 10400 is selling for $100 less, it can be worth considering if yeah, you have a strict budget. Anyway, the Ryzen 7 3700X that I'm demonstrating on has a base clock of 3.6 and a 4.4 GHz boost clock. It is based on AMD's insanely popular Zen 2 7nm architecture and with Zen 2 AMD has been able to bump 
uh, both IPC clock speed and latencies than against previous generation. And all of this plays an important role for gaming. Now installing the processor guys is in fact very easy. First you want to locate this golden triangle and this lines up with the triangle on a motherboard socket. So you simply want to turn the CPU so that the triangles match up. You want to open up the metal arm, you want to drop the processor into the socket. Then you put the metal arm down and our CPU is installed. We're gonna use the cooler that comes included with our processor. The cooler installment is also very simple. In case you're installing the cooler for the first time, there should be a thin layer of pre-applied thermal compound. Otherwise, you do need to apply a bit of compound on the CPU first. Now you wanna position the CPU cooler of the CPU so that the retention clips on each side of the heatsink align with the socket mounting lugs on the retention frame of the motherboard. Carefully push down the retention clip one at a time until both clips are hooked on to the socket mounting lugs and some force may need to be applied here. Then adjust the cam lever position to lock the CPU cooler to the retention frame. Now lastly we connect the fan power cable on the CPU cooler to the CPU fan header on the motherboard. Now we're almost done guys, the only thing missing is our RAM. And in today's build we're gonna use these top of the line 16GB Vengeance Pro RGB RAM sticks from Corsair. Now 16GB is actually more than enough for Cyberpunk or any other modern games. This 3200MHz kit that shows for this build will give you a bit of a frame rate boost versus using a slow clocked RAM. As the way that uh, the CPUs work, having faster clock RAM can gain a bit of performance in your favorite game. Now to install this, simply pull back the upper clip for the second and the fourth dim slot and simply plug them in just like so. Now with that done and clear, the real fun begins. It is time to take our motherboard assembly into our case and for today's build we're gonna go with the deep cold matrix 50 coming in at 99 dollars now this mid tower case offers everything you could ask for like a good airflow addressable rgb two side tempered glass panels and plenty of expandability for io coolers and everything for just 99 dollars now deep cool is selling the matrix 50 in different configurations guys and, and you want to pick up the case with either 3 or 4 pre-installed 120 ARGB fans. Now before we install a motherboard you want to first take out two of these upper PCIe slots. By having the CPU fan installed we can grab onto the CPU cooler and gently slide the motherboard into place. And to make things a little bit easier I like to have the case laying down as I'm installing the motherboard. And we secured the board using the screws that comes kindly provided by Deepcool. And with the motherboard installed and secured before we install our power supply, graphics cards and storage, I figured this is a good time to install our chassis cables that takes care of the front audio, USB as well as the power button. And as always let's start with USB 3, this is a wide connector and it's located right next to the 24 pin power connector at the middle of our Asus Strix motherboard. Plug it in just like so, next up we got front audio. Audio, and this connector is located at the left side corner. Lastly, we got the front panel connectors. And this can be a bit tricky guys, but yeah, don't sweat it. Just take your time. And you find this connector down at the right side of the motherboard. So let's install a power supply and in today's build I picked up the CX650M. This is a 650 watt unit from Corsair coming in at $83. Right after I filmed this guys I found out that Amazon is having the CV650 watt unit on sale and I'm linking up both options down below. Now the main difference between the two is that CXM is in my modular while the CV series is not. Anyway both offers high quality power and comes with 80 plus bronze efficiency certification and I have used both models and several PC builds in the past with great results. Now with top of the line performance, low noise and quality components ensure that your PC will run safe even if you decide to let's say overclock your CPU or graphics card later down the road. Now before we install a power supply, you want to attach the following cables on the back of the PSU. The first one is the dual 8 pin PCIe cable and then we also gonna need the SATA power cable as well. Now you want to make sure that you got the fan facing downwards then you gently slide the PSU into place and secure it. 
Now it is time to plug some of the cables into our motherboard and first up we got this 24 pin power connector for our motherboard and this one goes to a connector located on the left side. Next up we got the 8 pin power for our CPU and this one goes all the way up to the left side corner. Alright, so it is time to install our SSD and yeah, for today's build, I ended up picking the Kingston A400 with 480GB of storage. And while this unit doesn't offer the fastest SSD speeds, it still offers a great mix between price and performance. Now 480GB is more than enough for Cyberpunk and there is space to fit a few more games here as well. And you can always upgrade to a bigger drive later down the road as both the case and the motherboard has room for up to 4 mechanical hard drives or SSDs. There is also an option to install two NVMe drives on the motherboard as well. We're gonna need four small screws which comes provided from Deepcool. You wanna plug in this SATA cable that comes with our Asus motherboard as well as this SATA power connector coming from our power supply. You wanna route this SATA cable through one of the various routing holes and plug it in onto the motherboard. Time to install our graphics card and for today's build we find an RTX 2060 graphics card which is a brilliant 1440p GPU. Unfortunately it actually does seem to be an RTX 2060 shortage going on right now. Be sure to check Amazon several times a day if you're having a hard time finding one at MSRP. Now this card should sell for right around $300 and I don't recommend you guys spending more than that. Remember you don't wanna feed the scalpers. Anyway, the 2060 comes packed with 6 gigs of GDR6 memory, which is enough for 4K gaming in less demanding games. But for Cyberpunk, I recommend settling for 1080 or 1440p at most. Simply slide in the graphics card into the PCIe slot and take this dual PCIe cable and plug it in onto our graphics card just like so. The last final thing we want to do is that we want to connect all four pre-installed case fans to this included cable and you want to connect the end of the cable to a case fan header down at the bottom of the motherboard. Lastly guys, before we whack on the side panels, you don't want to forget the RGB hub. This one has a SATA cable that we need to give power to as well. And with that done, whack on the side panels and if you did everything right, yeah your PC should power on. Alright, time to play some cyberpunk and I actually found a pretty good sweet spot here where I'm averaging between 50 to 60 FPS, where I'm running the game at 1080p with everything at high to ultra with ray tracing set to medium. However, that requires that you activate something called DLSS or deep learning super sampling and it turns out that this setting plays a huge role in this particular title. Deactivating this results in about 40 to even 30 to perhaps even 50 FPS, so it is clear that this one does a tremendous job keeping up the frame rate. Now you're probably thinking, what the hell is DLSS? So deep learning super sampling is an NVIDIA RTX technology that uses the power of AI to boost your frame rate in games with graphically intense workloads. And with DLSS activated, you can run the game in high resolution and settings while still maintaining a solid frame rate. Now this feature has been getting some bad rep in the past, but Nvidia has worked hard on improving the technology where it now finally feels like it's a whole lot more than just a gimmick. And here's a screen comparison with DLS turned on and DLS turned off. Having ray tracing turned off results in about 60 FPS for the 2060 and jumping to 1440p, uh, the FPS drops all the way down to 40 FPS. Running with ray tracing at 1080p results in about 36 FPS and at 1440p the numbers drop down to 25 which yeah is below console levels. Now activating DLSS however, you'll be able to run the game at 1080p ultra settings with ray tracing while still averaging 58 FPS and at 1440p the number is still almost 40 FPS. Now keep in mind guys, you can always fiddle a bit with the settings here and you should be able to reach a satisfying frame rate at 1440p as well. Now beyond Cyberpunk, the PC will obviously do very well in other games too. And if we take a look at Apex Legends for example, we see that the 5600 XT performs a little bit better at 1080p, while the RTX 2060 performs a bit better at 1440p. 
but overall the gaming experience will be much the same using either GPU. Next up is PUBG and we see in that the 2060 is about 9% faster at 1080p and about 5 to 6% faster in 1440. Moving on to Battlefield 5 and to make things a bit more interesting I decided to throw in a few additional GPUs to give you guys a better idea how these two GPUs stand versus some of the as some of the other popular GPUs picks out there. Now at ultra settings at 1080p we see that the 5600X is about 4% faster and at 1440p the gap grows to 10% in favor of the RX 5600X. Next up is Control, a game that seems to be well optimized on Nvidia's GPUs where the RTX 2060 is about 1 FPS ahead of the 5600 and at 1440p we're once again seeing high numbers on the 2060. Keep in mind guys we're running with very high settings here and so this game is perfectly playable if you drop down the settings a bit. The RX 5600 shows healthy numbers in Gears 5 at 1080p as we can see. But the gap between the two shrinks a bit as we bump the resolution to 1440p. Metro Exodus at both 1080 and 1440p also runs a few FPS faster on the RX 5600 XT as we can see. While in Shadow of the Tomb Raider both cards shows almost identical frame count. Division 2 also runs runs great on both cards with the RX 5600 being a tiny bit faster both at 1080p and 1440p resolution. Lastly we have Forza Horizon 4 and a similar story here again guys, very similar healthy numbers from both teams in this head to head GPU battle. Again guys all PC components can be found down below. Now I am starting up a discord server and it would be fantastic if you guys wanted to join the awesome community and start discussing PC builds and issues and everything in between. Now I'm going to hang out here and answer any questions you guys might have so you definitely want to join. Now watch either of these two videos and I will see you guys in the next video.